I, uh, yeah. They're very particular <laughs> about very particular. where we sit. Yeah. So. Well, you've got to be, you know, dealing with you on these things, I understand. The, oh, thanks. The desire so to be nice. yeah. Can you hear, you guys hear Matt? Too. Yeah, can you guys hear me? There we go. Okay. Well, Kevin put him to sleep. Look at that. There. I don't know. Kevin's a tough act to follow. Was I he good? He was because we were prepping, so I have to watch it on video later. It was, yeah. Kevin's always yeah. entertaining. Yeah. yeah. We're going to be better. Mike is, anyway. So you're interesting. We've been, I've interviewed you a few times, and you're always interesting because, um, well, you won't always answer questions, but when you will, it's always a really honest answer, so I like that. So I'm going to ask you some stuff. Hopefully, you'll answer some of them. Also, you were at LinkedIn. You were a VP of product at Facebook. You've been at Benchmark now for like four years, right? Three, so, three years and change. Yeah, you just have a broad sort of spectrum of experience to talk about these big topics. So let's start off with, um, have you made any investments this year? Seems I, like you've yeah. slowed down this year a little bit. Yeah, I have not made any investments this year. Whoa, you guys hear that feedback? Um, yeah. I haven't made any investments this year. Um, but how that, many did you make last year? More than a venture investor typically would in a single year, for sure. Um, this year, it wasn't a um, kind of single specific decision. It just sort of happened. I've been, of course, been very actively looking. I think we're at yeah. a really interesting moment in time right now where some aspects of, of various important platforms are, are starting to shift. Um, and, you know, of course, the broader macroeconomic environment is really interesting too. And um, I've looked at a lot of stuff, and there's a lot of things that are really exciting and really interesting that are going on, many of which are here today, of course. Um, but I haven't actually pulled the trigger on any new investments this year, which is something I've consciously thought about um, every time I've looked at a new company. But, you know, I'll, I'll do it when the time is right. Do you, are, have there been any you passed on this year that you are, are starting to regret a little bit, or you feel good about the decision to sit? Um, usually, it, you know, one, one of the torturous things about my job is as time goes on, you get more and more clarity on all the things you've screwed up and all the mistakes you've made. Yeah. Um, so it's a little, I'm sure I've, you know, I'm sure I've passed on some things that are going to prove to be really important and really interesting already this year. Like, It'll probably take a couple years to, to figure that out. But you won't name which one? I, I don't know yet, is what I'm saying. Okay. Like, well, I let's think just go through all years. the ones you passed on, and then yep. next year we can look back. And, ah, yeah, it sounds great. No? Okay. Yeah. So, um, in 2010, we talked about Groupon, which yep. you have not, you had not and have not invested in. Had not and have and not. And at the time, it was, a, it was about the craziest sort of Groupon time. Everybody was like, yay, Groupon, me included. Uh, you kind of put, you put some water on the fire. You said, you know, this thing has no barriers to entry and no switching costs. Um, you don't understand how margins aren't going to collapse. Um, that looks pretty smart two years later. Um, but you have invested in, da in a daily deal site in, in Brazil. It's Pacherbano. Pash Pacherbano. Sorry to any Portuguese speakers out there. I just butchered that. So two years later, let's talk yeah. about this and how you see the market and where Groupon's going. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I, I do think that daily deals, in a way, are, are sort of an ad unit, which I think I, I said yeah. in 2010 as well. Um, I think it'd be a very good ad unit because any ad unit which users view as a type of content um, tends to be a very good ad unit, whether it's a Super Bowl commercial or an ad word or what have you. Um, and I think that's true for the daily deal ad unit as well. Um, as I said in 2010, there aren't necessarily switching costs or barriers to entry. Um, if you try to frame an entire product around that one thing. Um, and so we all know what happens to margins in the long run when you have a company that has that sort of position in the market. And, yeah. you know, as you said, I think we're seeing that with some companies. Um, in, in Brazil, there's a lot of white space open for, you know, building lots of really interesting large-scale services in areas where those needs are actually kind of filled already yeah. in the U.S. Um, and so... I think Pesci's built a really strong user base, a really strong merchant base, a really strong brand in Brazil yep. um, and across some parts of Latin America. And I think there's a lot that, that we can do with those assets. Um, I think Groupon's in a really interesting spot right now. The question is, you know, Groupon has some assets too. What can it do with those things? Yep. Given the market, you know, the market and markets that it's in, it's of course a global company. Um, but I, I didn't invest and haven't invested in, in Groupon for those reasons that we talked about a few years ago. Um. Yeah, your, your, your firm is an investor in Twitter, and you guys are very close mm -hmm. to them. Uh, this is something I've been talking about. I talked with Reed about it yesterday. They had some direct conflict with Twitter at LinkedIn. Um, 
there's been a lot of just complaining from developers about that ecosystem um, being sort of turned off in different, you know, sort of come on in developers and then kick them out. Um, and I already know you're not going to answer this question at all, but how are they, how evil are they being in your, in sort of your view of it? Like really evil or a little bit evil? Like you said, you know, I'm not going to answer yeah. these questions at all. Yeah. Um, are you, someone here, are you talking with Dick or with Jack or somebody's got to be? Jack didn't want to be interviewed and Dick is nowhere near this conference this year. Well, so. ask Dick and Jack when you get a chance. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's, you know, it's an incredible company. Um, we were lucky enough to invest in it at Benchmark. Yeah. Um, we invested in the company and about 24 people. My partner, Peter Fenton, is, is the only venture investor on the board at the company. So yeah. certainly close to the company, but yeah. as you know, I do from time to time. I'll redirect that back to the yeah. team. Yeah. So they frustrate you. You just don't want to talk about it publicly is, is how you'd say it, is how you'd you put said. it, I guess. Okay. How about, can we talk about Zynga? You're not an investor in Zynga. Investor can, we get, in Zynga. can we talk about that a little bit? What do you, I mean, are, they, are they done or do they have, you know, can they turn this around? Well, I think they, you know, they, they built something phenomenal um, on the Facebook platform, and they have to take that to the next chapter, both on Facebook and on other platforms. Um, and, you know, there's, I think it speaks to a lot of the things that are going on at a broader level in terms of the different platforms that matter today. Um, you know, mobile is something which I'm thinking yeah. about all the time now. Um, and I think, yeah. obviously, the team at Zynga is spending a lot of time thinking about mobile, too. Yeah, no, the last half of this talk is we're going to talk mobile and get real deep into that. Cool. Before we do, though, I want to talk about Cora Views. So they made a recent product change to allow everyone to see uh, what everyone else is viewing, unless people turn it off, it's default on. Uh, last night, I retweeted a post by Mark Suster, who was complaining about it, saying it was a breach of user trust. You have a lot of experience with at Facebook and just sort of dealing with change and how you address users and trust versus new feature deployments. Like, do you think this was a, a mistake for Quora or overblown or what? Yeah, you know, I have a ton of respect for Mark Sister's thought process in general, and I love yeah. reading his blog and, and the things he has to say. And he's been a huge supporter of the company. Um, I'm, I, we led the Series A in Quora at Benchmark. I'm on, on the board there. Um, I was a little confused by by that blog post. Yeah. I think, you know, it's a startup. Um, we're trying out new things, and the important thing is that you're transparent and direct with users, and you communicate clearly, and you give people choices, and it feels like it was a little bit of an overblown thing to me. But. So you don't feel it was a mistake. It was, it's an experiment. Okay. Yeah, back to why you haven't made any investments this year, I wanted to talk to you about valuations. Did it have anything to do with valuations in Flux? Is there, a, is there a disconnect there, or is it, has, it just has to do with, you're just trying to see where the markets are changing? So I think where the, where the valuation impact has been strongest in the private markets is in the later stage part of the private markets, yeah. um, the part of the markets that are closer to the public markets. And we don't have a growth fund at Benchmark. We don't do late stage investments at Benchmark. Yeah. Um, you know, we'll, we're not too rigid. We'll, we'll break our own internal rules for anything if we feel the situation warrants it. But the only time we've ever done a later stage investment is Dropbox. Um, and it, it's not something we intend to turn into a full program. We don't have a fund for it. So in the part of the market we operate in, which is sort of in between seed and late, it's kind of early stage venture, post seed and pre growth stage and late stage, yep. um, kind of, you know, classic Series A and Series B venture investing in the company yeah. building stage. Um, the valuations, uh, and, and it hasn't, it's certainly not, you know, causing me or my partners to change how we think about whether a company is interesting or not. All right. Uh, so let's talk about Facebook back in your day, which it seems hard to believe it's been four years since you were there. Yep, it does. Um, you know, particularly how the company looked at mobile back then, uh, very differently than today, right? In Were there some ways, key mistakes made back then. Do you think? In some ways, yes. And some, yeah. I'm answering your first question: yeah. how we looked at mobile then. Um, in some ways, differently. In some ways, not differently. Um, you know, when you think about phones and smartphones, these are inherently social devices. Um, they are going to be completely ubiquitous. So I actually think it's an incredibly exciting and important thing, which you know we're going to talk about in a yeah. sec, because um, you just said so. Um, the, you know, in, in a lot of ways. What a smartphone represents has always been kind of the spiritual core of what Facebook is about. Um, even you know, long before not only Facebook was on mobile in any meaningful way, but long before smartphones. You know, the, the uh, iOS platform only launched in 2007. Facebook launched in 2004. 
So even in the three years before that and before the smartphone market really started to take off, I remember we always used to talk very early on um, at Facebook about, you know, people were sometimes struggling to kind of get their arms around, like, what, what is this exactly and what is the significance and the magnitude of this, of this thing? And um, one of the ways we always talked about it many, many years ago when we were just like moving out of the last house we had into our first tiny office in downtown Palo Alto uh, was to say, you know, imagine like you had this device in your pocket and you could pull it out of your pocket and point it at somebody and it would tell you kind of, you know, what your relationship to that person was and how they fit into your life and your world and what your shared context was and, you know, just kind of help you to understand them better and understand your world better. And, you know, conceptually, that's kind of like what Facebook is. And the interesting thing is now, you know, eight years later, that's literally what Facebook is. You yeah. know, I mean, you actually do have that device in your pocket, and you do take it out, and you can do all those things with it. Um, so I think this has been very much at the core of what Facebook is about, actually from the beginning. Um, and so from that perspective, I, I think it, it hasn't changed. I mean, you know, the company has grown. The team is incredibly strong. The growth and engagement are incredibly strong. The mobile growth is astonishing. It's gone from 325 million active monthly mobile users last year to over a half a billion now. Um, so it's, I think, about 67% growth year on year, if I remember the, the numbers that were released correctly. Um, that's, that's pretty remarkable. Why did the company stick with HTML5 for so long? I mean, they almost went down with the ship. It you know, really pushed it to the very end. Aren't you talking to Mark this afternoon? Yeah. Yeah, ask him then. Yeah, but then I'll say, hey, so Kohler this morning said. Ah, so, right. Yeah. Said, well, just say, hey, well, Kohler said I should ask you. This he afternoon. said, like, in 2008, you were telling him HTML5 is a loser. <laughs> but no. All right. Yeah. That's that look you yeah. give me. Well, you do want to talk about some areas of mobile where you see opportunity and think, yeah. where things are evolving. Um, and you had sort of five points backstage. So let's go through those. If you, yeah. yeah. So sure. The first one is mobile advertising. Yep. Yeah, let's yeah. talk about so that. Yeah, so mobile advertising. So I'm sure many people here in this room would agree with this statement, but I think in the broader world, a lot of people don't see it this way. I'm, I'm really perplexed at how this consensus seems to have emerged that mobile advertising is not good or is not going to be good. Um, I'm actually in extremely bullish on mobile advertising. I don't have a lot of data to support this yet because it's very early, but just sort of thinking about it from a product perspective, I think mobile advertising <coughs> is going to be huge and actually is going to be much better than web advertising ever was. And the reason why, principally, is that mobile devices, you know, think about a smartphone screen, that's actually a lot more like a television in the ways that really matter than a web browser ever was. You know, with a web browser, you got 12 different things going on at the same time on the page. You have three tabs open. You've got a keyboard. You've got a mouse. The user's distracted all over the place. Um, it's not that immersive. Um, whereas a smartphone, you have a single screen. The user's attention is focused. The connection that the user feels to that device is very, very deep emotionally. There have been really interesting studies done around, you know, MRIs kind of showing that the same regions of the brain get lit up and activated when people touch their smartphone as when they touch their pet or their loved ones. Um, so this is like a really, 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 it's like yeah. a really important personal emotional device. And um, the user's attention is focused. So I think it's a really great advertising medium. Um, and that's actually part of why I was originally excited about investing in Instagram. Um, we did the Series A in Instagram, and, and I was on the board there until uh, Facebook acquired the company recently, um, was the belief that mobile advertising in that sort of a context could be really, really big. Um, so I'm very optimistic about the future for that. Okay. Uh, the second thing was uh, payments, user payments. Yeah. Yeah. This has been a space that's been drifting. Well, user payments on the web have proven to be fairly difficult, I think, for some of the same reasons that I was just talking about before. Um, but I think it's going to be a totally different story on mobile. I think, you know, Asia kind of shows the way on that. And I think we're already starting to see user payments for services on mobile smartphone devices. Um, that you know never really happened on the web, and I think that's that's just getting started, and it's also a huge opportunity. And you know ties into one of the other things you and I were talking about before, which I'm also really excited about with mobile, which is mobile marketplaces. Um, and what I mean by that is once you can assume that everyone has a smartphone in their pocket all the time, which you pretty much can at this point in the developed world at least, um, you can wire up new markets really, really quickly and effectively. You can basically 
what do you need to wire up a market? You need the demand side and the supply side. You need the buy side and the sell side. And now you can just assume that everybody on both sides of that has one of these things on them all the time. And so once that's the case, there's all kinds of new markets that become possible. Uber, is, you know, it's a company that we did the Series A in at Benchmark as well. I think it's a really good example of that, of the ability to just suddenly light up a whole new market um, once you assume that everybody has one of these devices on there. So I'm really keen on, uh, on that opportunity, and I'm looking for more early stage companies that have some very, very early traction, which are building those types of marketplaces. I think marketplaces in general um, are you know, always an interesting model, and in this mobile era are gonna be really interesting. We've done, of course, we did eBay way back in the day at Benchmark, but we um, also did the Series A in a really interesting company called First Dibs in New York, which is a marketplace. Called what? First Dibs. Yeah. Um, we're very uh, early investors in Odesk as well, which is a really interesting company. By the way, if you're having a hard time hiring people in the Valley, which I know everyone in this room is, um, you should definitely be turning to Odesk to find engineering talent. You can use it to find people overseas. You can use it to kind of dial up and dial down your engineering capacity on demand. You can use it to, to take some of, the, um, some of the work that maybe you don't want your internal team focused on and kind of offload it to that environment. So I think marketplaces are really strong. Sorry, what, what company was that? Odesk. Odesk. Yeah. If you want to hire, you use what company? Odesk. Odesk? Yeah, OK. Yeah. yeah. Um, Did they at any point, out, I mean, was this sort of a request to sort of make? Sounds like it was a request to you. I don't know. I, um, Odesk. Prop E was with Ron Conway or Odesk the, for hiring. Um, the, the, but the, I think the mobile opportunity around these things is really, really interesting. Um, because now you can really start to assume that everyone on both sides of a marketplace has this device on them all the time. Um, so that's, that's a really interesting thing, too. You had no segue into Odesk. It was like mid-discussion of mobile market. Oh, by the way, Odesk. Are they a sponsor here? I mean, it, this No, is, but this I, is you, I was going to ask about yeah. them. Yeah. Um, OK, Odesk. Uh, platform Wars. Platform wars. This is an interesting question. Where is all this going? So right in the thick of it all right now. Is Microsoft going to pull it off or what? I don't have a crystal ball. Your guess is as good as mine. I think they have their work really cut out for them at this point. Um, I think, you know, if you look at the state of the world today on the platform wars, um, I think that basically the way things are set up to play out right now, Apple is pretty much positioned to have control of nearly all of the market share in the market in terms of profits. And Google yeah. is positioned to have control of nearly all of the market share in the market in terms of actual market share of units. So in other words, I think that the more profitable part of the market is currently controlled by Apple, and it looks like it's going to stay that way. Um, and Google is, as is consistent with their strategy, just kind of trying to disrupt the economics of the market as much as possible and, and get their operating system as ubiquitously distributed as they can. I actually think the fragmentation that people complain about with Android yeah. is actually the best thing for Google, given their strategy. Um, and then meanwhile, Wait, with Samsung- Why is that? Well, because they basically, you know, their, their basic business model is to commoditize every information market in the world except for AdWords. Um, and yeah. so this accelerates that process. You know, they, they don't want economic uh, strength to exist in the, mobile, in the mobile kind of vertically integrated hardware platform market because Apple's going to get the profits if that happens. Okay. So they'd rather the profits just didn't exist, essentially. Okay. I'm not sure if they're conscious of that or not even, but I'm pretty sure that's how they're playing the game. Okay. Um, and, so, you know, and then there's Samsung, which is basically there to scoop up everything that's left um, and doing a pretty good job of it, I might add. There was a picture that somebody was ha sending around Facebook, and it, it was three people in a classroom. Yeah. And it was a woman, like, studiously working. And it was a man sitting next to her, kind of looking over at her work. And there was a guy in the background just like this, with his head in his hands. And it said the woman was Apple. And uh, the guy looked copying over was Samsung. And uh, in the back was uh, Nokia. I thought that was kind of funny. Cute. So, yeah. Um, so what about Facebook's role in all this? I know they're working on the Facebook phone even back when you were there. Is that still an ongoing project, you know, actual hardware stuff? Well, it's still an ongoing rumor. <laughs> <laughs> they need, do they need to get into the hardware game, do you think, eventually to, to win yeah. or no? You know, I'd, I'd, I'd ask Mark about that again. I mean, I think when you go back like, to definitely these... Definitely answer that question. That, no question, yeah. he will, yeah. Um, yeah. 
you know, going back to this kind of broader platform question, a lot of where the rubber hits the road on this, particularly for everybody in this room, is how does it affect distribution and, you know, your ability to get distribution? I think Facebook, with over a half a billion people using mobile every month, um, is in a pretty good position there. Okay. What about Nokia? Are they around? Does Windows even have a fighting chance? Um, I think they do have a fighting chance because they've got a big footprint and they've got a bunch of really big and important distribution channels. And one game that Microsoft has always played well is how to succeed when they have control over the distribution channel. Yeah. You know, they've always really been a channel company. If you think about, like, what was the last huge success for Microsoft? It was Xbox. And Xbox is something where Microsoft actually has really strong control over a channel. Um, the web never made that possible. Of course, the other big change at Microsoft is that the consent decree has finally ended. So that frees them up to do some things that they haven't been able to do in a very, very long time. Well, they can get back um, into that anti-competitive behavior but, a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> or they get back to competitive behavior. Yeah. Um, and, you know, whether they're going to, you know, execute really strongly in competitive behavior or not remains to be seen. Um, I know my, my partner, Bill Gurley, is, feels very strongly about the topic of, of RSUs and thinks that that has actually something yeah. to do with competitive behavior in, in a bunch of big companies. Um, but I do think they have a fighting chance because they have such a massive footprint and such distribution, but it, they have their work cut out for them, for sure. 